In the last lesson, we learned that JavaScript divides async tasks into the macro task and the micro task and adds them into the macro and micro task queue. The micro task queue has a higher priority than the macro one. As a result, micro tasks will be completed first. In this lesson, we will learn why. Here comes a new concept, event loop. The JS engine executes the JS program via event loop. Depending on the program design, the complete execution of one program may take several rounds of event loop. An event loop starts with the execution of the first synchronous task in the current scope and ends with the clearing of the micro task queue. For example, the program we are using needs two rounds of event loop to complete. The first round will execute the set timeout function and assign the timer ID to variable timer. Then the callback of the set timeout function will be added into the macro task as the first element. Next, it will resolve the promise and add the then method into the micro task queue. In the end, it will output the timer ID and number two. Now all synchronous codes from the global scope have been completed. The JS engine will go to the micro task queue and clear it. The then method will be executed and output the success value. So we will get three on the console table. Now the first round of the event loop has completed. It output three values. Then the JS engine will check the macro task queue. If the macro task queue is empty, it means the entire program has been completed. But here, the macro task queue is not empty. The callback of the set timeout function is stored in it. The second round of event loop will be started and execute the callback. We will get one on the console table. The callback we use here is quite simple. It only has one console log statement so no more micro or macro tasks will be added into the queue. Now the second round of event loop has completed. There is nothing left in the macro task queue, so JS Engine will stop working as the entire program has been executed. Next, let's make a copy of the promise and paste it into the callback of the set timeout function. Now the second event loop will add a micro task into its own task queue. After the console log statement on line 6 has been executed, the JS engine will clear the micro queue, which means we will get the success value on the console table. We can see our prediction is correct. The second event loop now gives us two outputs. Next, we copy the second set timeout function and paste it into the first one. We put it behind the console log statement. What kind of result will we get this time? The callback of the inner set timeout will be added into the macro task queue. After the micro task queue has been cleared, the JS engine will move to the macro task queue and clear it. So the text we console log on line 8 will be output at the very end. We can see our prediction is correct. Next, let's make things even more complicated. We turn the disabled set timeout function back on. What kind of result will we get this time? When the JS engine runs the program, it will first execute the set timeout function on line 3. The timer ID will be assigned to the variable timer. The callback will be added into the macro task queue as the first element. Next, the set timeout function on line 12 will be executed, and its callback will be added into the macro task queue as the second element. Next, the promise will be resolved, and its then method added into the micro task queue. After that, the JS engine will console log the timer ID and number 2. Now, at the global scope, all synchronous codes have been executed. The JS engine will clear the micro task queue to complete the first event loop. As a result, the then method will be executed and the success value will be output. Now the first round of the event loop has been completed. Then the JS engine will check the macro task queue and clear it. The first element in the macro task queue is the callback of the first set timeout function. This callback will be pushed into the stack and get executed. 
The JS engine will first resolve the promise and add the then method into the micro task queue. Then it will console log one. After that, it will encounter another set timeout function and add it into the macro task queue. So now the macro task queue has three elements. The first one has just been completed and dequeued. The second element in the macro task queue is the set timeout function defined on line 12. It will be executed after the first one. The third element is the set timeout function defined on line 7. It will be executed in the end. We can see the execution result has proven our analysis to be correct. The inner set timeout function defined on line 7 will be executed at the very end. 